Uh, friends, we are starting now. Today is 158th Friday group meeting. Uh, the speaker is uh, Justice uh, Retail uh, Narsimha Redigaru, uh, former Chief Justice of Patna High Court. Now he is practicing as a senior advocate here. Last time on 16th September, he addressed on this uh, Fundamentals of the Law of Peace, that is a part one. Today is going to be part two. So, friends, sir. Before, today we can have an introduction one by one. We have a time. We can have myself, Shesh Giri Rao, and Mukut Mathur. Sir, who am I talking to? Sir, I'm Andy Arya. Ravi Rathor. P K Sinha. Ajit Kulsresh. Yes. Amit Pratap Singh. Rahul Sharma. Bandhanais Mandal. Sir, Atul Shah. G D Verman. Anshuman Sir. Dilip Nag Sir. Good evening, friends. It is my privilege to have some discussion with you about the law of wills. Earlier, we covered the fundamentals of law of wills. It was mostly about the making of wills, and the concentration was mostly upon the aspect of attestation. Now, in continuation of that, I propose to deal with some of the other aspects. But let me be very clear to you that even this part two, we may not be able to cover the whole of the law of wills because it is uh, very vast. Today, we will start with uh, a, an intermediary or hybrid variety of will. We have seen that under will, what accrues to another person is an involuntary accrual, something like in the as under the gift. Under the gift also, property accrues to a third person without any consideration. The difference between these two is the gift takes place between intervivors, that is when both donor and donor are alive, whereas under the will, the accrual or the bequest take place after the death of the testator. There is an intermediate category of that, that is known as donatio marta casa. It resembles the gift in one aspect and resembles the will in another. Suppose a person is seriously ill and he is contemplated death. He has some movable, not immovable property, movable property with him of substantial value. Then he intends, he does not have the time or facility to execute a detailed will. Then he may hand over those valuable goods to another person of his choice with the intention that in case he dies out of the serious illness, those properties shall accrue to the person to whom the possession is given. Now here, the giving of those mobile properties by the person to another resembles the gift in the sense the possession is delivered to the other person during the lifetime of the owner of the goods. That In that way, it resembles the, the transfer under the gift. But the actual title in those things was in the doni only after the death of the actual owner, that is the donor or the testator. So that is uh, the resemblance with the will. Will as such may not have existed, but due to the, with the acts of the parties, an intermediary character or a hybrid variety of will or test, uh, accrual takes place under this gift donatio motto. It is dealt with under section 191 of the Indian Succession Act. Now there are certain conditionalities for this. Invariably, it shall be only in respect of movable properties. Second is, the delivery of possession must take place at a time when the owner of the goods is seriously ill and actually contemplating his death. Second, that is second aspect. Third is, the delivery of the goods, that is, movable property, shall be absolute in form, not conditional. 
let us say the valuable properties, gold or some other valuable articles are contained in a box. The possession of the box is delivered, but the key is kept with the owner of the course. Then the event does not take place. Second, he gives one key and keeps with him a duplicate key. Even then, he does not rectify or materialize into a, a actual disposition in the form of a will. So the delivery of possession, physical possession of the property must be absolute and unconditional and the actual title would vest in the donee or the recipient only after the death of the person who gave it. So this is a hybrid form of will. The examples are also furnished in that and uh, any lack of or uh, nothing short of absolute delivery of possession would rectify into the, the accrual of the property to the donor. Thereafter, we shall deal with the aspects of family law on that. Normally, will can be executed by anyone in respect of his self-acquired properties. But in case of persons governed by Islam or Muslim, uh, Muslim law, <coughs> there is some restriction. He can execute a will only in respect of one-third of his uh, self-acquired property and not exceeding that. The remaining two-third must be divided among the his legal heirs in accordance with the law of succession of that particular religion. There, uh, here again, there is an exception. First, the in case he does not have any legal heirs at all, may be an exception or a rarity, but in case the person does not have any legal heirs, he will have the liberty or the right to execute the will in respect of the property exceeding one third. There cannot be any serious exception to that also. In case of Hindus, earlier, <coughs> it is not as if under the ancient Hindu law there was no facility of facility similar to the law of wills. It did exist, but restriction used to be that first he should, a, pro, a person who owns some property, first he should make provision for the maintenance of his family. Then, if something remains, he should also provide for the family in the near future. It is only in respect of the remainder of the property that he can execute the will. That used to be the law. But at present, that uh, distinction does not appear to be continuing. This is the limitation as regards the persons depending upon the religion which they profess. The <coughs> now, once a will is made, it is capable of being revoked. That revocation can take place in more forms than one. That for revocation, first it is where the testator executes a subsequent will. But that subsequent will must be in respect of the very same property. Suppose the testator has three, four items of property, all of which are self-acquired. Then he executes a will in favor of X in respect of an item of property. That will can be said to have been revoked if only the very property, very item of property which he has bequeathed to X, he executes another will in favor of Y. But the subsequent execution of a will in respect of a different item of property, maybe in favor of the same person or different person, does not per se liquidate or the revoke the earlier will. In other words, a person may execute a will of an item of property in, in favor of a person, another person, and if only he executes another will in respect of that very item, the earlier one will be deemed to have been revoked. <coughs> Conversely, if he executes a will in respect of a different item of property, then the revocation of the earlier will does not take place. Then another is by when the will is destroyed, either on account of floods or fire or anything, 
it is not available. The facility of obtaining a registered copy of it, all those things are not available in case of wills. What is contained in, uh, it is not, if the original will is lost, there is no way it can be retraced or regained. Therefore, it will be deemed to have been revoked. Then if another uh, aspect is when the person, the testator or the one who has executed the will, if he contracts another marriage after execution of the will, then the earlier will per se would stand revoked. There is another way of revocation. Through a separate deed, the testator may say that he has the will executed by him earlier will stand revoked on occurrence of such and such incident. Then in the revocation deed, if he has referred to an incident, if that incident takes place, the earlier will stand uh, earlier will uh, stands revoked. In the, similarly, if the incident referred to in the deed of revocation does not take place at all, then the revocation does not take place at all and the or original will will remain. For example, the, he may say on the occurrence of <coughs> such an incident or uh, let us say on the his son acquiring a degree in medicine. The will executed by him in favor of a third party will stand revoked and the property will accrue to his son. It so happened that his son does not clear medicine at all. Then the since the condition did not happen, the revocation does not take place and the original requirement, that is the original will stand as it is. So this is about the revocation of this. Now, oh, there, there is also a rule against perpetuity. Suppose the person bequests the property, no doubt, but he puts <coughs> a condition that it will take effect. Initially, it will be in favor of A, thereafter, after death of a in favor of B and after B it will take place in, to, in favor of his son whoever is a elder or whatever it is. Then this perpetuity cannot be permitted at all. It says the section 114, 114 it is that is, no bequest is valid, whereby the wasting of the thing bequeathed may be delayed beyond the lifetime of one or more persons living at the estate of death and the minority of some person who shall be in existence at the time, expiration of the period. The, the, as I said earlier, if the bequest is firstly in favor of A, thereafter in the uh, after uh, in favor of B, and ultimately in favor of the son of B, this is a uh, almost unending process. Law does not permit of that. Therefore, it says it shall not be the bequestal or the disposition shall not be delayed beyond the lifetime of one person and the minority of another. At the most, you can say, I bequeath this property in favor of A for his lifetime and thereafter his uh, son on his attaining majority. To that extent, it's okay. It will uh, be valid. Because lifetime of one person and the majority of another after the lifetime of the initial legatee. Beyond that, if he says the, uh, this, uh, there is also one, uh, the first illustration itself is makes it clear. It says the property is bequeathed to A for his life and after his death to his eldest son for life and after the death of the latter to his eldest son. At the time of the testator's death, A has no son. Here the bequest of A's to son is a bequest to a person not in existence at the time of testator's death. It is not, uh, uh, sorry, this is the example. A, a fund is bequeathed to A for his life 
and after his death to B, sir, initially to A, for his lifetime. Let us say after the death of the testator, A lives for about 15 years. Then after the death of A, we shall go to B, but it does not stop at that. He says, uh, death to his uh, B to, for his lifetime and after B's death to such of the sons of B, I shall first attain the age of 25. A and B survive the testator. Here, the son of B, who shall first attain the age of 20 years, 25 years, may son may be a son born after the death of the testator. Such son may not attain 25 years. More than 18 years have elapsed from the death of the longer liver of A and B, and the wasting of the land may thus be delayed beyond lifetime of A and B and the minority of sons of, uh, sons of B. The bequest after B's death is wide. So to that extent it is wide. What it, uh, the section emphasizes, you can delay or you can prolong the ultimate, uh, <coughs> it is a continuous bequest in the sense, A is bequest property for his life, lifetime. But the A does not get absolute title during his lifetime because the remainder is kept in favor of B. So he invariably, A has only to enjoy the property without the right to dispose it of. That right will accrue to B after death of A. Now, even at B, it doesn't stop. It says B's, uh, uh, the bequest in favor of B is only for his lifetime. He has to enjoy the property and it will pass on to the son of B who, who attains the age of 25 years. So it is almost an unending process. What law permits is, at the most you can delay or you can limit the bequest in favor of a living, living person till his lifetime and 18 years in the sense the person in whose favor the property is bequested may have a son and uh, the, with a view to benefit the bequest in favor of the son, unborn son. <coughs> It should end at that, not more than that. So lifetime of one person and 18 years thereafter, contemplating that even if a person is born at that time, he will get majority by that time. So it cannot spill beyond that. So it is rule against perpetuity. That is also in a, in a sense contemplated of the transfer of property also in a different way. Then. But there is an exception to this. That is, the underlying principle under section 100 and, uh, uh, this is, is, 100 and uh, the exception to that principle is where the bequest is coupled with the obligation to pay the debts, repay the debts of the testator. Suppose the testator has huge amount of debt, the debt and at the same time, a vast extent of property. So he bequests both property and debt. <coughs> if the payment of debt takes place beyond the lifetime of a person and 18 years also, it does not become void. Otherwise, it becomes void if it spills over beyond the lifetime of one person 18 years. But the exception is where the bequest is coupled with the obligation to pay debt. Pay debt. If the payment of debt is spilling over the lifetime of an individual and the uh, 18 years, it does not get wide because it is uh, coupled with obligation. Even if it takes some more time, it has to be honored. That is the exception to that. Second exception is where, let us say, a building, a, a monumental building is bequeathed to <coughs> an individual. Its maintenance <coughs> needs uh, quite a uh, bit of amount and for that provision is made for the rentals from any building and all that. The will may provide that the rental or any other form of income accruing from the property does not go to the legatee or the donor and it should be utilized only for the upkeeping, upkeep of the property. Ownership of the property would waste in the donor, but the income <coughs> derived out of it needs to be 
spread for the maintenance and upkeep of the building. In such case also, the exception is carved out and uh, it can spill over beyond the lifetime of an individual and 18 years. So that is rule against perpetuity. Another important aspect is the doctrine of acceleration. The doctrine of acceleration is where the testator puts some conditionalities which are likely to delay the actual accrual or actual disposition of the property in favor of the debtor. Then the condition is permitted, it is treated as legal, but if the event, if this very event takes place in a different form, then also it is, uh, it is uh, honored. Suppose in the, if according to the original disposition, the accrual of the property or bequest will <coughs> used to be delayed by let us say 25 years. But on, a, on occurrence of a particular event or incident, if that very event or if the very result occurs after 10 or 15 years, then the uh, accrual takes place, the bequest, bequest of the property takes place. An example is given under that. This is uh, the, uh, this is under section 129. It says, suppose a property is bequeathed to B. A, a, a executes a bill in favor of B. He says that subject to the condition that if B fails to execute a document of a particular description within, let us say, 20 years or 30 years or one year, if he fails to do that, the property shall be bequeathed in favor of C. If he, if B does the, those things within that time, the property rests with the uh, B only. But if he fails to do a particular act, then the property passes on to C. This is the type. Of, this is the purport of the will. Now, what does it mean? In the in the event of failure on the part of B, let us say to execute a will or whatever it is, uh, to execute a document or to <coughs> adopt a son or to do some other thing, construct a building or establish an institution, if that is the condition, if he fails to do any of those things, the alternative <coughs> with in favor of C takes place. <coughs> now here, the let us say B died earlier. So instead of uh, the, the question of his undertaking any other thing does not arise. Therefore, once B dies, the next accrual in favor of C takes place without waiting for that. So an event which was to take place after a particular time, maybe a longer time, will stand advanced, that is acceleration, doctrine of acceleration. The ultimate bequest has been accelerated on account of an event which was not contemplated under the will at all, but with the same result. There, wa there was to be a failure on the part of the initial uh, legacy, initial legacy. That failure has taken place on account of his premature death. Either way, the, there was a failure or non-compliance with the incident, <coughs> which in turn has resulted in accrual of the property to the subsequent legacy, that is C. So this is doctrine of acceleration. <coughs> now, normally, whenever a property is bequeathed on third person, that will, uh, in its original form, accrue to the legacy, that is doni. But there is bound to be fluctuation. We have seen the concept of redemption also. Redemption is where, suppose the uh, under the impression that he a particular property belongs to him, the testator executes a will in favor of a third person. He dies. By the time the will is sought to be put to execution or to operation, it emerges that the testator does not have any title to the property at all. 
or it ceased to exist, or it is stolen, or it is, or the testator himself may have sold it away during his lifetime. In such case, adoption takes place and the will becomes almost uh, invalid. Now, this, where the will <coughs> is in respect of the property as a whole held by the testator, it is subject to fluctuation. In contrast, if it is in respect of a specified item, then that either that item accrues or doesn't take. But where it is in respect of unspecified, but uh, uh, the uh, uh, unspecified and uncertain property, then it is subject to fluctuation. Either it may diminish by the time the testator dies, or it may increase also. Suppose if he says all the property held by me. By the time the will was executed, he may have his bank balance set, let us say, 50 lakhs. By the time he dies, it may be 70 lakhs. So, though initially what was in existence was 50 lakhs when the will was executed, the legacy or the donor will be entitled to 70 lakhs if it was there by the time of the death of the uh, testator. Similarly, if it has diminished, on account of information withdrawal or whatever it is, the, he will get only the whatever amount was remaining. This fluctuation is bound to be there, where the, the will is in respect of an unspecified but a generally discovered property. The, another aspect is the fluctuation may take place on account of change in law. At a time when the will was made, let us say there was a, a particular regime of law under which he was entitled to retain a particular property. Let us say land ceiling, urban land ceiling, these are the things. <coughs> he, when the will was made, he may have been holding an acre of land or let us say 5,000 square meters of land he was entitled to remain. He, he was owning and he executes a will. In between the date of will and the death of the testator, a law comes, urban land ceiling. You are not supposed to hold that much of land. You are entitled to retain only 1,000 or 2,000 square yards or square meters. The rest of it rests in the government. So though the will was in respect of 5,000 square meters, it stands restricted to only 1,000 or 2,000, which is permissible under the law. So there is a likelihood of its increase also. How? Suppose he was a, the uh, testator was a tenant. The tenant was uh, having only tenancy rights in respect of land. Now the agrarian reforms come to place, where under the tenants are conferred with the ownership rights also in respect of some land. So <coughs> though what was created under the will was only a right under tenancy, that is rights in respect of land. So initially there were tenancy rights, now they may ripen into ownership rights also. So by operation of law, either the legacy, the, the, uh, the property bequeathed under the will, either, may, either it may diminish or increase in its extent or value or uh, in volume. These possibilities are there. under the will, the testator may use a particular expression which may be typical to the area or community. The, while interpreting the will, one has to keep that into, uh, take that into account. Sometimes there may be overlapping also and the net result has to be taken into account. One illustration which is given there is, the testator makes a big quest in favor of two persons. One, he says, my land which is in possession of Mr. X, I am hereby giving it to Mr. Y. So whatever is possessed by Mr. X or uh, Mr. X is given to Mr. Y. And another item which he describes as either marshy land or wetland 
on some uh, forest uh, uh, land uh, classified as forest land is given <coughs> to Mr. Uh, Z, third person. It so happens that the property which was supposed to be under provision of Mr. X contained some forest land also. So, though the forest land as such was given to Mr. Z, the fact that the first part of the uh, bequest, which is in the position of Mr. X, if it contains the forest land also, the notwithstanding the overlapping, he, the first legatee, that is, why will get the entire property, including the forest land, such portion of it. So these are the things which are typical to the uh, individual wills. The emphasis is to understand or to give credence to the understanding of the testator. The, sometimes the language of the will may either expand or restrict the scope of the general, exp uh, general expressions. In a particular area, suppose Bhiga in Uttar Pradesh is of certain area and it, in Bihar it is totally different. So the areas are different. So though it is uh, referred with the same name, the extents will differ. So depending on the, uh, the nativity of the person, we have to understand the concept. So that is uh, how the Indian Succession Act also provides for such a benefit or the uh, leverage to the person who executes the bill. Now similarly, the persona designator. Suppose if the bill is uh, executed in favor of a person with a description not by name, the description sometimes uh, you say I hereby give it to my mama. So mama sometimes maybe can be a maternal uncle or in some places some other person also described as uh, mama. Then we have to see <coughs> what is the area in which the person was living and what is its general connotation. We cannot uh, import the general the connotation which is prevalent, maybe widely prevalent. You cannot do that. One has to understand the description from the point of view of the the testator. That is Now, one important distinction what needs to be kept in mind is the demonstrative legacy. It is a very subtle distinction. The the contrast is between specific legate, uh, specific. Uh, legacy and demonstrative legacy. Specific legacy is the one in respect of which a, de a specially described item is donated by a testator. He says, I hereby donate my shares in so and so company to Mr. X. That is specific. But he say, if he say completely obliteration or disappearance of the a bequest that take place readily where in respect of specific legacies but it doesn't take place and the rights of a legatee or the doni will remain intact in case of the demonstrative legacy. This is the certain distinction uh, one has to maintain. Now the important part of the law of wills is about their putting into force how they are putting, put into force, how their benefit under the will is realized. There again, the process is not uniform. Firstly, the <coughs> testator himself may appoint an executor under the will itself to ensure that the distribution of the property or the bequest of the property takes place according to his wish and the executor will oversee the entire exercise without taking, he is like a catalyst, catalyst in a, a chemical uh, rea uh, process or a chemical uh, reaction. It, it accelerates the reaction but does not take part in it. Similarly, an executed, executor will not get anything out of the bequest but he will ensure that the, demand, the distribution or equal takes place as per the wish of the testator. 
Second is by way of probate. Probate is generally, of course, the law, there is now uniformity about this. Generally, probate is uh, resorted to in residency towns. Residence that is uh, Bombay, Madras, uh, Calcutta, <coughs> wherever the presidency courts existed, there is the facility of probate is there. Once probate is given, the uh, distribution as per the will takes place and corresponding title also will vest in the persons in whose favor the will is executed. So the another form is by going to letter of administration. Letter of administration is available, can be taken from any court of competent jurisdiction in any place and once that is letter of administration is taken, that in turn gives rise to the approval of the property or putting the property to the persons whose favor, in whose favor the, uh, the bequest is made. Yeah, yes. We'll yeah. have question answer. Depending yeah. upon finish, we yeah. can ask question answer. Uh, of course, I can, can cover so many things, uh, but it will be. I, I have touched only those things which are become important in our day to day life are the bills that are executed uh, by and large. There are so many other niceties how the will is to be executed, uh, the, the interpreted, so many other things. Are, I have touched some important aspects which we come across in our day-to-day -day practice in life. If you have got any doubts on that, uh, I'll be Doubts, able to... any questions, please. Sir, suppose if a bill is executed for property number A and B in 2011, you come, you come. in favor of uh, one son. Thereafter, in 2018, the mother executes a general power of attorney relating to property A in favor of his uh, next son. In that condition, what will be the validity no, no, of that? No, first you tell me who is the mother, one of, mother, who executes the will. Mother executes will for property number A and B in favor of <coughs> X. X. Thereafter, in 2018, she executes a. This general is in 2011. Power. Yes. Ah, uh, 2018. She executes a general power of attorney uh. giving power to sell to his other son Y. Uh. A and B are also sons. A and B are sons. Ah. X and Y, I, A and B are the property. X and Y are sons. A and B are? Sir, there are two properties, A and B. A, A and B properties. Okay. Ah, A and B property. X is son, Y is another son. Ah. Fine. Bill is executed in the year 2011 for uh, property number A and B in favor of X. Mm. Then in 2018, the mother executes a general power of attorney mm. in favor of another son Y mm. for property number A. A. Then what will be the validity of that will? No. All those questions will arise only after the death of mother. Is mother alive? Yeah, now she is died. Now she is expired in 2020. No. So what did uh, Y do? GPA. GPA dies with the executed. G what he did, he sold the property on the basis ah. of GPA. Yes. Then uh, the, the, the sale becomes valid. Sale becomes valid. Yes. Because though A and B may have been uh, bequeathed in favor of uh, X, yes. but the will is valid. The will is valid. Only those properties which were executed in favor of X, those properties are valid. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yes. Yes. Now, sir, will it make any difference if in will the first will which she executed, she states that if his son's son predeceased her, if she mentions in the will that if his son X predeceased her, in that case the entire property will go to his successors. But in another will which she executes in favor of Y, she doesn't mention this fact. Will she make, will it make any difference? No. More. Any questions further? Yeah. Please, sir, please. Uh, yeah. Question? Yes. Yeah. So my question is, yeah. it's a situation where there's a will that has a will that has been created ah. by a testator, but after the death, the person who is supposed to be the beneficiary may not have applied for a probate, hmm. but must have got benefit from the will, meaning got the property mutated or gone ahead and got the registrar's office to change the name and all that. I want to know, does getting a probate or obtaining a probate no. after a will? Probate is not that compulsory. It depends only in uh, these uh, residency towns that is provided. Right. In other places, one can get the letter of administration. Yeah. Or it can, uh, 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 once it is put into the court, yeah. the state away also, suit can be filed claiming the benefit under a will. In which case, you have to prove the execution of the will and you have to explain the suspicious circumstances. So even assuming there is a probate, that if there is a probate which has been obtained even then, if there is any question relating to the validity of the will, that has to be answered. Yes. Based yes. On the probate is only to the extent of adding some executability to the will. But it is always subject to the uh, proof of its uh, attestation and the explaining away of the suspicious circumstances. It can be challenged at any time. Ah, any time. Any time. So the, the person who is otherwise to get the property under the uh, general rule of succession will always be entitled to question that. Yeah, please. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, A, executive will on his adopted son. A, executive will on his adopted son. Adopted son. He adopted son. In his name, he executed. What, sir? After his death, can the biological uh, son or daughters they can claim that property? How can there be adopted son with biological son? Is there? Most of the time, the son is actually the adopted. No, no, no. Adoption, Adoption can take place only when there are no natural. Children. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Of course, biological. If he is born later, that's a different thing. <laughs> Ah, then you, you, you complete the question. We will uh, we'll give the benefit of the doubt to them. <laughs> <laughs> is that actually, can they, if it can is not possible, give? then adoption, then how is it possible? Because the biological son or daughter, after the death of A, can they claim of the under property? That is my question. Ah, that will arise if only the property was ancestral in nature. If the property was self-acquired for the father, he is entitled to do that. And they always can challenge that will. Any more questions? Sir, one on perpetuality, sir. Ah. A dies I mean. and says that my property goes to Mr. B and then goes to his C. son, C. Ah. It means B cannot dispose this off. Is yeah. it right? It means it will continue. He will be held responsible to maintain till he hands over as per the will. That's it the It's only life estate. That is known as life estate. Correct, sir. So even his property creates a lot of life, but he will not be entitled no, no. to enjoy is fine, but if it is, it turns out to be a big liability. That's what I'm saying. If it turns out to be a big liability, <laughs> then it's it, uh, you say I don't want under the will. You, uh, I don't uh, disown it. Better to give it to the position of it. Huh? Better to give it to see, not to be. Alex, that is. No, can't do that. Can't do that. It's if like the, the, if of the will says, if the will says. You keep, uh, I am uh, bequeathing this one acre of land, but you have to maintain my entire family comprising of ten children. Yes. This is, I don't want this. No, but you are not being asked. It is something which comes when the old man is knocked off. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the bargain you are doing with the person no, no. making the deal. <coughs> anyway, Fine. So thank you all. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Taking a lot of pains for explaining these wills is a tough, tough. Uh,
topic in fact we are well very uh, tough subjects are you have simplified we are all benefited so many issues are there but still uh, in uh, fundamentals uh, you have explained yes, so much all, to be said very much, much. Mm -hmm. i uh, 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 covered only certain aspects uh, <coughs> uh, mr muthu will uh, give you a vote of thanks sir, sir uh, firstly thanks sir. thanks for such a wonderful topic the first one and then the second one part 1 and part 2 as rightly pointed we need more of more topics especially on bill as they say where there is where there is a way probably there is also we can say that where there is a bill there has to be a property <laughs> so it was a, it was wonderful sir especially a lot of topics that you covered the doctor of election so i have only ignited the possibility of further thinking on the basis of this we can go to agree extent you can dig it to mine of this thing So I only sparked the that that spark itself is uh -huh. uh, what what we call is insufficient sir. We need more such uh, fireworks. In fact, more than sparks sir. So mm -hmm. we expect more such. Then uh, thanks a lot for delivering such a good lecture and thanks for enlightening us. Yes, It's my pleasure. Yes, and on behalf of all of us again once again. I will be too sir. happy if it, uh, this proves to be of some even minute help to our friends here. Yeah, of course, sir, hundred percent. now you can reverse the switch of that you can now you can please reverse the